What's good, sports fans? Al York Sports with another one. Like I always say, so much to do in so little time. Shout out to the LES, Vegas Strong, East Coast, West Coast. Let's get this popping. I'm going to start off a couple subjects, but we're going to start off with the end series debates. Uh, both series are 2 1. Celtics are up 2 1. Warriors are up 2 1. Give you a couple of breakdowns, then we're going to move on to the next subject. In the Boston series, it's a huge game three or game four. Let me correct myself. I think this is the typical game of the series. I think whoever wins this game wins the series. If Boston wins, they're going to be three up. They're going to be up 3 1. Cavaliers got to win four in a row. With that suspect lineup, I don't think that's going to happen. If Cavaliers pull it off, I think they'll get all the momentum they need. I think LeBron gets stronger as the series goes on because he starts to identify a lot of their weaknesses, which uh, a superstar does. Is The more deeper they get in the series, the more they identify weaknesses. And if he gets through tonight, I think Cavaliers are going to savage the series and win maybe 4-2, 4-3. But uh, tonight's the biggest game, and uh, come on, LeBron, y'all got to step it up, man. But let me go through a couple statistics of how individ individuals are doing. For Boston, you got Jalen Brown averaging 18.7, 5.3 rebounds. Uh, Jason Tatum averaging 15 points. Al Horford, 14 and 7. And Teddy Rozier averaging 13, 5 and 4. That's for the Celtics. That's for the Cavaliers. LeBron James is averaging 28. 7.3 and 11 assists, almost a triple-double. Kevin Love is averaging 17.3 with 12 rebounds. And if he continues that type of production, they will win this series. But he has to continue. And Cal Cove is averaging 10. And that, uh, that whole bench and everybody else that's with LeBron, that you got to pray that every night somebody steps up. Hopefully tonight it'll be JR again or even uh, George Hill. We need guys to step up. Tristan Thompson, and when I say we, it's because I got the Cavaliers to make it to the next level. So we means my money. That's what we means. because I'm not a Cavalier fan, never been a Queen Jane fan, but he is the second best player of all time. I know a lot of y'all laughing right now. So uh, that's it for that series. Uh, tonight's, good to, in my opinion, is going to determine who moves on. Let's go Cavaliers. As for the other series in, uh, in Oakland, Warriors are up 2-1. to one. They get game four at home. Uh, the problem with the Rockets is that uh, Harden, James Harden is coming up short. He went from 41, 27, and 20. His game is disintegrating by the, by the game. Chris Paul is averaging 17 points, but he's only averaging 4.3 assists. I remember when Chris Paul used to have his eyes closed and average about seven assists. So that's killing them because they're playing a lot of iso ball. And the ISO ball worked all year round. It ain't going to work against Dub Nation because they got sneakily great defense. They got great D. They defense leads them to their offense. So ISO is not going to be an answer. ISO might win the Rockets another game if they hit in all their shots. See, that's the thing about ISO. You got to hit all your shots because you won and done, basically. That's why I go to state. I love their chances. Because the ball keeps moving around, which gives opportunity for open shots, players moving around, or more possibility for offensive board. As for the ISO, if the guy misses, everybody's in position of defense to rebound. So you're going to go basically one and out, and the ISO's not going to work. Dan Antoni, who's supposed to be a genius on offense, you're not looking like one now, bro. Because if you was a genius... You'll jump out that ISO and make other things work. And you're not doing that, bro. You're living and dying with the ISO and you're going to die. You won game two with it. You lost game one and game three. And at that ratio, you're going to lose this series, bro. And that's what it is. And not to mention with the Warriors with the four potential Hall of Famers. And if you ask me, a lot of y'all might think I'm crazy, but this guy's going to get a lot of votes when he's all done to go to the Hall of Fame, especially if he picks up these rings at the end of his career in Andre Iguodala. Iguodala, I'm telling you, man, he's going to get a lot of votes when that Hall of Fame thing come up, especially if he can stack up rings 
at the end of his, in his career. And as for the scoring, Durant's averaging 33.3 with four rebounds. Steph Curry, 23, 6, and 5. That 35-point game helped him in game three. Klay Thompson, 16.3. And Draymond Green, who does all the dirty work, is averaging 7.7 7 rebounds, 7 assists. I love me some Draymond Green. As for the Rockets, Harden's averaging 29.3. Mostly on that 41-point opening game. Uh, six rebounds, six assists. Paul's averaging 17.3, 8.3 assists, 4. Point, I mean 8.3 rebounds, 4.3 assists. That's what's killing him. He's got to distribute the ball to these open guys and, and, and cause movement and chaos because if not, they're going home early. And Eric Gordon's off the bench at 17.7. So that's your in-series playoff debate. Now we're going to move on to MLB where my New York Yankees are 30 and 13. They tie with the Boston Red Sox. For the best record in baseball. How you figure? I remember when there was five and six. And all these Met fans. Not that I'm trying to start no beef with the Met fans. Because they've been real quiet. Just like I like them. But they were talking man smack. Oh they five and six. And now we 30 and 13. But in reality all that means is that we're 43 games in. In 161 game schedule. So. Really don't mean much. But I love. The lane that we're going in, I like how we winning. I like how we utilize all our young studs. Not to mention we got a few of them still hurt, as in Greg Bird, uh, Frazier, whether he's hurt or he's getting sent up and down. You know, we got a lot of dudes. I did want it, uh, to pick up Jose Batista, Joey Bats. Not that we need him, but he'll be a great veteran who can fulfill an outfield spot, infield spot. Anybody gets hurt. You don't lose nothing with Joey Bats. And last but not least, a great clutch hitter, a crunch, clutch hitter at the end of the game. Pardon me with that. Great clutch hitter at the end of the game. Let me rephrase. So we don't need him, but I'd love to have him as a security blanket, insurance, etc. But we, what we got to focus at, we got to get another marquee starter and bring up either Chase Adams or Sheffield to fulfill another spot and start, I think with another prolific starter and one of those rookies coming up succeeding, I think we'll be set in the starting rotation. And our relief pitching, we kind of mixed up now, but we got arms back there. I'm not worried about the relief. As long as we got Chapman to close, we got Batances, Holder, and all these other guys, Chad Green, et cetera, Warren and Robinson, we're going to be all right. Salute to the New York Yankees. Continue to do the great job that you guys are doing, guys. And now, last but not least, we're going to NHL. We're going to the Vegas Knights. I told y'all two series ago to take them to win it all. Now, they ran through Jose, right? And then they ran through the Winnipeg Jets. Right now, you could have been in great position to hedge out. So that's why I'm going to tell everybody on YouTube, if none of my New Yorkers heard me, my YouTube guys. Hedge out just to get your money back. Now, don't hedge out halfway. Just to get your money back and you're still in a nice profit because if I remember, it was plus 250 when I gave that out. So the Vegas Knights doing their thing. First year, them playing hockey. First year, they in the Stanley Cup. I know a lot of teams are upset. You got teams that went 30 years without seeing the Cup, even longer, maybe even 30, 40 years without going to the Stanley Cup. Vegas did it. I told y'all it's personal for multiple reasons. One, they didn't want a hockey team in Vegas. They thought it wouldn't work. Two, all the players that came to Vegas were basically released by other teams or teams decided not to take them on. So that's a chip on a player's shoulder. And three, last but not least, the concert deaths that haunted Vegas, they're playing for those families. So that's what I'm saying. These guys, I mean, if you didn't jump on them now, you still could take them to win the Stanley Cup, but you would have been in great position if you would have took them when I told you because now you could have got what we call a free bet, which is you just put money up to get your money back from you taking them two series ago. So you lose, you get your money back. You win, you still win profit because you could have got them at plus 250. And y'all know I ain't lying. Check the videos. All my work is on the videos. Just like I call Boston, Boston 
to, to come over on the Philadelphia 76ers. And I got Cleveland I'm waiting on. And I got Vegas Knights I'm waiting on to win it all. All that is in the pudding. All the proof is in the pudding. So now, Vegas Knights, let me go through they, 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 uh, they series. They lost game one, four, two. They won game two, three, one. They won game three, four, two. They won game four, three, two. And they won game five, two to one. They beat Winnipeg Jacks four to one. They are the fucking truth. Vegas strong. Let me throw it up. Vegas Knights. Vegas represented. Yo, I'm, I'm not even a hockey dude, dog. But this, this town is going crazy for what this team is doing. And salute to the hockey team, man. Vegas Knights. Continue to do what y'all doing. Now let me give y'all some bonus coverage. And I'm the fuck out of here. Al York Sports. Uh, let me educate y'all. On June 9th, my boy Dwayne Super Beeman is having a bout against Heppenerito. A Mexican cat that's supposed to be nice. Mr. Stop Running Beaming. Fuck this nigga up. Move him out the way June 9th. And go to your other fights, your other bigger fights, and get that main event. Because I told you, I'm coming out with you on your main event, dog. I'm going to let these, these little uh, tune up fights go by. I'm going to show up when you most need a nigga. I'm going to be right there by you, dog. Dwayne Super Beaming. Mr. Stop Running, my dude. And last but not least, my voice is gone, but I'm going to keep pumping. The Pickup Show, we're going to be on June 8th. I'm going to give you all the exacts, what app to download, where to go to. But as of right now, we got a new home. Thanks to DOC that made that happen. Nick and company, I can't wait to meet the new family. They're 100% behind us. You're going to see a whole different ball game now. Because now we got help. I know what it is not to have help. I know what it is to be Michael Jordan. And I know what it is to be LeBron James. So when you get help, you learn to appreciate shit. So this new family that's going to provide us with that. All we got to do is do what we do. Do what we do. And they're going to take care of everything else. So like I told y'all, June 8th, Friday at 8 p.m. I'm going to give y'all all the specifics, y'all. All the specifics. Pardon my friends today. Soft don't fucking me up. But I'm still going to get this work done. But that's what I do, baby. Al York Sports. East Coast, West Coast. Vegas Strong. L.E.S. Like I said, baby. Al York Sports. Love y'all niggas. Tune the fuck in. Let's get it, baby. <laughs>